This is a presentation of the Esprit Compact software. To start the software, we double click on the desktop icon. This brings in the login environment. Each analyst can have their own login and whatever they do in that field will not affect anybody else. Plus one can set level of expertise so you can have a basic advance in a supervisor mode. This is the main screen, expanding at full scale here are all my controls for operating the software. Note as I point to anything, I get a brief description as the function of the operation. So object mode is our basic collection for imaging and s spectrum. I can annotate the image and collect spectrum in each one of those locations. Digital line scans, digital or hyper maps, or spectral imaging maps as you may know them communications with hardware and software and allowing me to customize it is all under system control. Then my specific controls are located here. So my sample properties, again, as I point to a down arrow key and click on it, the system brings up the menu for that object. We only go one level deep on our menus. So this allows me to set my prefix for the day, also any descriptions I want. I can also add th any other annotations such as operator name or time of data acquisition or a specific key code that may be important to the operation. I can also preset that I'm coding the sample let's say with carbon so the system will automatically know to strip out the carbon peak when we go into quant or I can set up a correction for that if I'm coding with carbon and analyzing for carbon and that will show you in a later movie. OK clears out that and saves that panel. Microscope is the communications with your microscope. So every time we collect data, we're picking up the current magnification, the KV, and the working distance. So this is automatically saved with the data for you. So you don't have to worry about inputting that information. Scan is the control of the digital beam. We can collect images from 100 on up to 4096 pixel resolution and we match aspect ratios to the microscope. Typically most microscopes are 4 to 3 aspect ratio but we also can handle 1 to 1, 3 to 4, or 5 to 7 depending on your microscope. The service technician at time of installation will set that up for you. So all you're setting here is the x-axis. The y-axis will be set up proportionally based on the aspect ratio. We have two video channels. Unfortunately, most microscopes only output one video channel. If your microscope outputs multiples, we can collect up to two at the same time. We have separate controls for image acquisition, digital mapping, and digital line scan. And in those controls, you have separate controls for dwell time, or pixel averaging, and line averaging. So depending on how heat sensitive and how clean uh, you want to clean up your signal, you can use a combination of dwell and line averaging and also frame averaging at time of acquisition. EDS is the communications with the x-ray detector. Your actual throughput will vary depending on the model of system you have. But typically you'll have one or two choices in here, not usually all these. Basically what you're setting is your throughput or shaping time. Uh, this is for your optimum operation for your system. The key thing to realize for that particular throughput, whether you're counting at one count or whatever the maximum is, you maintain resolution, efficiency, and calibration over the entire range. Maximum energy, you're really setting your EV per channel. We collect 4,000 channel spectrum at all times. That divided into your energy ring gives you your EV per channel. So you can have two and a half, five, ten, 5, 10, or 20 EV per channel. Mode is turning the spectrometer on and off. From room temperature, it takes approximately 30 seconds for a spectrometer to cool down and be on the air. Cooling controls located here. Keep it set in the thermostat mode. Maximum is for older spectrometers. Cooling system. This is diagnostics for the cooling system and the electronics. So on and OK means everything is fine, nothing to worry about. If there were a problem, a message would appear. Typically, SD spectrometers run between minus 20 and 40 degrees Celsius. Currently, my spectrometer is running around minus 30. 
So it shows you what your operation will be. And this will pretty much remain the same over the life of the spectrometer. Close closes that panel. Object mode is for collecting an image and collecting x-ray points, x-ray data at each one of those points using any of the annotation. Digital line scans, hypermaps, and then system is for setting up the hardware. So this is the communications with the x-ray detector. It also shows you what version of software you're using. It also shows you what your system number. This is your NIC ID number. Uh, it can also show you your license. So this shows you what features and capabilities you have on your system. And if you ever need to update it, this is where you'll go to update the license as well. Appearance is how do you want your KLM markers, your x-ray display to work? What language do you want to work in? Um, how do you want your images set up? Your defaults for the JPEG averaging, uh, normal TIFF, whether uh, zero is black or white, depending on the format you use. Uh, also, your message box, and then default colors for your selections on anything you do. Over here, you can adjust your KLM markers. So, for instance, I want more labeling on my titanium line. So, we're not only having the titanium K alpha marked, I want to show the K beta marked. I also want the L lambda and the and the L alpha marker. I also would like this full labeling. So, if I wish, I can have it say not only that it's the titanium K line, I can say the K alpha one, K alpha two, or whatever is appropriate. And for my default color, I want titanium to come up aqua. So that'll be the background color of the KLM marker, as you see here. But it'll also become the default color for my x-ray map. Close closes that panel. You have controls for your reports. These are templates. So in your report, you can adjust exactly what header information you have in here. So what label you want. You can also change the court to the corporate logo. What's placeholders you want for your data? Uh, you can either change them manually under the object control, choose a new placeholder, or you can double click on them and that'll bring your selection if you wish to change it and maintain positions. You have defaults for chart, you have defaults for your x-ray data. So when your quant results come out, this comes out like an Excel spreadsheet, so you can adjust the, the, the cell width, the cell size. You can also adjust the font and default colors. Same thing with your x-ray quant data. You can adjust how much information you want as default. So whether you want things like the atomic number shown, net counts, normalized mass or weight percent, etc., plus what error you want, whether you want 2, 3, sigma, whether you want absolute or relative error shown. Whatever changes you make, once you've made all your changes, make sure you hit accept. That will lock in those changes and update it for your system. Choosing object mode, this is the main mode for collecting an image and doing simple spectral analysis. So right now, capture is the mode for collecting an image. Down arrow key means there's a menu. So my choices are I could do a single frame, a continuous frame, I can do a sliding average. I also have automatic numbering if I wish to utilize it. I'm going to switch to continuous, hit capture, and there's my current image. All right, using the controls on the microscope, I can adjust brightness and contrast. Also, if I press the right mouse button here, I can ask for a histogram display. So now, as I make my changes on the microscope, it'll show me dynamically what I'm doing to the histogram in itself. So I can optimize my brightness and contrast. I can also optimize the signal that's being sent to me. I have a separate gamma control, contrast, and brightness control. But this is all after the fact. You have an auto contrast and brightness, and neutral resets the defaults. I can then increase my frame averaging to clean up, my line averaging to clean up the signal. So I have a nicer uh, looking signal. Once satisfied with that, I can simply hit stop and I'll finish the frame and there's the area I'm going to collect from. To collect spectra, I'm going to use my annotations here. 
So I have a series of annotations. So if I can put a box up and say I want to collect data from that box over there, I can say my ellipse, put an ellipse, and say within that region over there. I can use a polygon so I can handle irregular shapes. And I can do a series of points. So I can say I want to collect the spectrum at this location and this location right here. Select all tells the system I want to collect all those points, or I can just simply point if I want one specific one. Under the acquire, these are the conditions for which I can collect X-ray spectrum. So again, pressing the down arrow key brings up the default menu. So we can do what's called automatic mode. There's three modes, fast, precise, exhaustive. Basically what we're saying here, this is an automatic preset count. Fast is 100,000 counts within the entire spectrum. Precise is 300. And exhaustive is a million counts. So irregardless of count rate, it's assuring you I'm meeting minimum statistics. Manual is just that. Keep collecting until I tell you to stop. Live time, real time within the system. So whether I, I want to base it on clock time or with the full dead time correction. Counts. I can select my own default region. So let's say I wanted to collect just based on counts within my Iron K Alpha Peak. I can set that range and set the number of counts I want everything to be collected for. Automated quantification. With this on, the system can either continuously or post acquisition automatically do an identification and quantification for the data that's there. You can select other methods available to you. So there's a wide variety of methods open that you can utilize on the system. Automatic counter for your spectrum. So this is how you reset your counter for your annotations and your spectrum ultimately. And then saving your data. You can have the system automatically save it to a discrete file simply specifying where you want it either in your home directory or someplace on disk so I'm gonna put it in my home directory right now I'm gonna create a new folder give it a name so with that I'm gonna select and that's where my data will be stored when it's finished when the acquisition is finished so to do the actual acquisition I hit acquire and here's each of the spectrum coming up all quantified and displayed. And currently we're working at about f just under 40,000 counts a second. So each spectrum is taking about four to five seconds to collect to meet minimum statistics. So with that, when we finish acquiring, using the rollerball, I can expand and contract, place the cursor anywhere I want on the display to expand or contract about that location, simply by clicking. Currently, I have all of the spectrum overlaid. I can come in here now, and I'm going to, using properties, I can turn on the legend so that we can see which spectrum is which. Clicking the All button, now as I point to any of these spectrum, it just shows me the single spectrum. And at this point, this spectrum here came from this box over here. This spectrum came from the ellipse over here. This spectrum came from the polygon. This spectrum from that single point and this spectrum over here from this point. Clicking all immediately resets the overlay. I can select all the data and now I can set up my report. So again, going to the in and out control, coming over here, I can say let's add this to report. It automatically brings up my report. There's my s image with all my annotations, my five spectrum overlaid, and my quant results in an Excel spreadsheet also showing the average, the standard deviation, and the error for the analysis. And as I do more analysis, the system will automatically append this report. 
X closes that down. Anytime I want to see the report again, again, I can go to the in and out control and simply say show report. For your spectral manipulations, you have the usual. You can expand and contract about the roller using the roller ball by simply clicking on the area of the spectrum you want to expand on. You can pick up an axis, move it up and down, both horizontally and vertically along the axis. Clicking on the right mouse button in the background, you can bring up properties, which allows you then to choose between log, square root, dynamic scaling if you're comparing multiple regions. You can also dictate whether you want the grid on or off, things of that sort, automatically. Automatic vertical scale can simply uh, be hit at any time and it expands both, optimizes both the horizontal and vertical axis for you. If we're satisfied with the data, it has already been saved to disk for me, so I don't need to do anything else. If I want to move to a new area, I can now move to a different area and collect a new analysis. Select all, delete these results, press delete, and we can clear out all of this information as well at any point in time. So with this, again, I can choose if I want to do an overall area. I can do something like that. And now hit Acquire. Remove the previous spectrum. And again, it automatically updates the range and all the other data. With any set of KLM markers, we have the periodic table tool. So if I want to manually do the identification, I can do that myself. You can simply click on any KLM marker, it brings it immediately up onto the display for you. All right. Pressing the right mouse bar, you get a more extended label. So if you, for this particular application, if you want the full Greek alphabet, you, uh, alphabet on the system, you can turn that on and off, and you can turn it all for everything at the same time, like so, simply by clicking all. And you can extend it. Any changes you make in here is temporary. If you want the permanent changes, you must make them an, an appearance. All right, with any set of KLM markers, we can do dynamic scaling. This takes into account background, so we can look at the markers that they're counting full height on all the peaks and ensure that that's the only thing we're seeing too, that there's no evidence of an overlap present. If I do clear, that clears all the KLM markers on the display. For identification, you can simply click on any marker at any time, bring it up. Utilizing this control, I can move up and down an atomic number following Mosley's law. I can click on multiple markers at any point in time. If I wish, I can go to Finder, which is basically a computer assist, which means I can either point to the peak, it shows me what the possibilities are, or using the right mouse button, I can in scan the entire peak and look at all the possibilities within the area, whichever way I prefer. Clicking on that brings it up onto the display. Clicking on it again removes it, so it allows me to quickly look at different fits to see which one makes the most sense.